guys welcome back to the channel we got a little something different today we said that we were going to start doing some things a little different and so this is something new we thought it would be fun and uh but we're gonna we're gonna let Lacey do the reading part though <laughs> yeah yeah and this is uh, I'm gonna read because usually I am the asshole so it's <laughs> only fitting that I read the N M I the asshole uh for refusing to help with my 21 year old sister's 23rd no, she's 20 no, no. The, the op's 20 well so i'm i'm trying to i'm yeah. trying to read the uh, the title up here but it's kind of like cut off oh but it's a 21 year old female sister's 23rd female baby or baby in the middle of the night yeah so yeah. she's 21 and the sister is 23, 23. and she didn't want to help with the baby in the middle of the night. Okay, so that's the premise. Is she then not as well? I guess we have the story and uh, I guess we'll, we'll decide. It. Yeah. I like being judge and jury. Yeah. Okay. Right? I Say thought me. See, me, I me, thought, me. I thought we would all enjoy this. <laughs> okay. All right. Are y'all ready? Yes, ma'am. I am. All right. Okay, so the OP says... I am a college student and I live with my family still. Last year, my family moved into a slightly smaller house and because my sister and I were gone all the time anyway, me with my college and her with work and staying at her boyfriend's house, we agreed that we'd share the biggest bedroom. And it wasn't going to be a long-term thing, especially since we're both getting to the age where it's time to fly the coop. I would have by now, but I'm in nursing school and can't juggle a full-time job to support myself simultaneously. It wasn't a big deal, especially since we'd been since we'd really only have to occasionally be in there together during the summertime. However, in the fall, my sister ended up getting pregnant with her boyfriend. She said her and the boyfriend were going to figure it out. It's a little complicated since he's 25, still lives with his mom and her and him live an hour apart. That is difficult. Uh, his mom wanted her to move in because they have the space for her and the baby, but his mom smokes in the house, so it wasn't a viable option. So they spent months trying to figure it out, but neither of them were willing to compromise and move and get an apartment in one city or the other or until literally a week before she was scheduled to induce. My sister agreed that she'd be willing to move to his city and get an apartment there together. However, that week came quickly and baby was born. A month later and she still lives here and he still lives an hour away and only comes to see them three days a week. During that time, I'm expected to get out of my own bedroom and crash on the couch, which is ridiculous to me, but... And then he's not here... Or, and when he's not here, my sister gets so unbelievably angry at me for not getting up at 1 a.m. to feed and change her child. She claims that it's selfish of me not, to not since she hardly gets to sleep as it is and it helps her out a lot. I've done it a handful of times, but it exhausts me and I remember that I am young and childless. I'll help during the day, but I'm not losing sleep when it, I wasn't the one to decide to have a child while ill-prepared. She's angry at me for it, which I can kind of understand because we are her support system, but I shouldn't have to change more of my life getting kicked out of my bedroom losing sleep than the baby's father does. And it seems like my generosity is being taken advantage of because neither of them seem to be in a rush to get out. Am I the asshole? No. I do not. Not think at all. I do not. Not think even she's a the little asshole. bit. No. I do not at all. At all. Now that it's been explained, at first I'd be like, eh, but no, you are not the asshole. Nope. Your sister's the asshole. I mean, and I have two kids. I didn't have any help. It was all on me, and I never yeah. complained about that because, like, that's the way I was. I felt like it should have been. Like, I mean, I didn't yeah. work. My husband worked. I got up and I took care of the kids. Well, and when my best, when I'd stay the night at my best friend's house, when I go visit an hour away and stuff, and she had a baby, like, she never once asked me to get up and help. Sometimes I would, but like, there was times where I'd be like, yep, yeah, no, not my kid. <laughs> like, because it's not my kid. You know what I mean? That's her job. Like, when you have a child, that is your responsibility. I, I love, so, and, I love and the fact Carol, she's already helped. I love when Carol gets quiet because I know she's supposed to disagree with us. <laughs> yeah. No, which so, is fine, but like she no. already has helped. The boyfriend ain't doing shit. No, nah, this is on the sister. She doesn't get to get mad. She did that to herself. She put herself in that position. That ain't nobody else's problem but hers. She did get up and help a couple of times. Uh, but at, at, at that point, and she had plenty of time to get this all fixed. Nah, she's definitely not the asshole in this, this situation at all. So here's what I think. Um, I definitely 
wouldn't say that she's the asshole. Like, I, I, I wouldn't say that. Here's where I think that, and maybe it's just because you're talking about 20 some year olds, you know, so my mind goes differently to think about, let's, let, let's think about what are the certain compromises that could come into play, right? Not being told, like, like if the boyfriend's there three days a week, right? And that like making sure that that's a compromise that, you know, that her sister would be okay with being out on the couch because you are asking her to leave her bedroom, right? Yeah. Like, she only was there technically full time, right? The sister was the one that was staying at the boyfriend's and then came back pregnant. Um, yeah. and, the, and the reason that I don't have a whole lot of sympathy for the sister who is pregnant is because I had um, my pseudo daughter that lived with me with her two kids and her boyfriend. And then she came to me all excited to tell me that she was pregnant. My first reaction out of my mouth was, you can't live here. So, and you know, and it's because you are the one that chose to not use protection and got pregnant when you already have two kids and already don't technically have a home and you're staying in my house and taking up my whole upstairs, right? And so I'm like, you can't live here. Love her to death, but you can't live here, right? So, um, you know, that was known. And then it, when it kind of came down to the wire, kind of like this, and it was, well, we still don't have anywhere to go. Again, I seemed cold hearted and I didn't, it, it wasn't supposed to be that way, but I've helped this person a lot, a lot, a lot in life that I was like, well, it's kind of not my problem. And I already have what? my son who is moving back in. So you have to move, you were told you had months, months and months you knew. Yeah. What is so, it? Is it cold hearted or is it tough love? Right. Well, I mean, so, it must be pretty, pretty, pretty tough love because I haven't spoken to her in nearly two years since she well, since the day she left my house. Well, then that's so, that's that's on her and not exactly. on you because that is you setting boundaries. <laughs> you gave her a time limit. That time limit came, and that is on her. That exactly. should have been her. That's her shit. She needs to find herself a place. Not you. You don't right. need to bend over backwards and accommodate someone else that's fucking selfish of her to assume that you would exactly. or to right. even ask and, you to. And, a real friend would not. See, and that's my real life story. Am I the asshole, right? Like that's <laughs> my real life story of, am You're I not the asshole? The asshole. No. With, with like, you know, something really similar. So that's why I, when I read it, like, you know, I'm yeah. like, okay, to expect the, the 21 year old to get up in the middle of the night with your baby? Absolutely not. Yeah. Like, absolutely yeah. not. Like that is not okay. Now, if she got up on her own and was like, okay, sis, I got it. Like, and try to help out, that's different. But that's yeah. your child, your right. decision that you made. Exactly. And so I definitely don't think that she's the asshole, but I do think that maybe if they had like worked out a better, like had a communication, you yeah, know, communication. And, and, and helped out like, okay, here's the schedule. We're adhering to the schedule and like, okay, I'm not getting kicked out of my room three days a week. I'll do it two days a week and the boyfriend can sleep on the couch. You know what I mean? Or whatever. Like yeah. I would have like maybe tried to come up with whatever solution, but that's always what I, my brain automatically goes to, well, what's the resolution, right? Like here's my problem. So what's the resolution? Well, I think uh, the biggest problem where I run into it is like the sister should, they should be getting an apartment together, her and the boyfriend, and they should be yes. dealing with that. The fact that she's staying in the house that she came back to big, that's a big problem, right? Like she's now, not only is she like standing there, but she's using that as like free help. Like it should be the boyfriend doing that. It should be the father of the child doing those things, not the sister. And right. so the, the, the other sister should be trying to actively get out of the house and get into a place where her and the boyfriend are together because the girl shouldn't have to sleep on the couch at all. The boyfriend should sleep on the couch every single time, in my opinion. Right, she you know? shouldn't have to lose her room, her bed. No, not at all. I don't think so. And I, I think, uh, you know, she, her sister needs I, to move out. I think her sister needs to move out. <laughs> I think the Big sister's guy. being a little, a little selfish here. Oh, She'd definitely. Be a whole lot of selfish. I'm just. Well, and that's what <laughs> happens when you're 23 and having a baby and you're not ready for it. You know, like you're. Yeah. You, I was 21 when I had my firstborn. I didn't expect people to get up yeah. in the middle of the night with my kid. Well, and see, it's like, yeah. I think our generation was raised different. Yeah. Yeah, see, because I was 21 when I had my son, um, and I lived with my mom at the time. And then um, I was, you know, I, I was pregnant, blah, blah, blah. And 
during that time frame, actually, my husband and I actually ended up separating for a while while I was actually pregnant. Um, and so I continued to live with my mom. She was fine with that. But then um, I was made to pretty much stick. My mom's boyfriend at the time um, didn't like kids, didn't like the fact that I had a baby. She, he didn't like any of these things. So I wasn't allowed in the rest of the condo. Like I had to literally stay in my bedroom with my baby. Oh, wow. So I was like, well, this is, this is a negative, right? Like I'm not yeah, going to live yeah. like this. So when he was about five months old, all on my very own, making very little money, I got an apartment, you know, and never had one. So of course they didn't want to give me the apartment because they're like, you don't have any rental history. <laughs> and I looked at the lady and I said, how am I supposed to get rental history if no one will rent to me? Right. I said, I need a place for me and my baby. And she was like, you know what? Yeah, you can have the apartment, you know, because... You know, because I finally was just like, but what am I supposed to do? Nobody wants to rent to me because I don't have rental history. But how are you supposed to get the rental history if nobody will ever rent yeah, to you? That's so what I don't understand. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you know, long story short, because I know we will probably want to move on. But, yeah, it, it it just, I don't think that she's the asshole. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I day, think that's I the consensus. She is not the asshole. Yeah, and no. it looks like Reddit agrees that she's not the asshole because it says not the yeah. asshole. But I still wanted to Definitely read it because I was interested. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But. Yeah. These are always interesting because when you first read like the title, the title of it, you're like, hmm, I don't know. And then you hear the story and you're like, oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Right. It makes more sense now. Definitely not the asshole. Okay. No, let's no. move on to another one. I wish I had a gavel. So I could just like. Not you know, the asshole. <laughs> not the asshole. All right. This one uh, it says, am I the asshole for telling my cousin I can't come to his wedding because of no child rule? Ooh. This could be sticky. I know. This is, this is a, uh, okay, so scroll. Uh, yeah, oh, okay. Hang on. Let me, <laughs> let me back up there. There you go. Okay. All right. My cousin is getting married at the end of August in California at a vineyard. No one in the family is in California. So to go, I need to get a hotel. Me, my mom and my brother found an Airbnb that relative uh, that is relatively close. I also uh, also I should mention my husband is posted abroad and won't be coming. I was going to fly to the U.S. for this. Oh, OK. So out of country. Not right out of country okay whoa uh the invite came out only three weeks ago and we had to scramble to find a place the issue now is that i have a four-month-old baby who only breastfeeds and won't take a bottle she had to drink from an open cup one time because i needed to take a driving exam and that is as long as she'd ever been away from me they just let us know that no children under 12 are allowed so i told them that logistically i can't come they suggested that me and my mother go back and forth to the airbnb to watch the baby and i said it's just too big of a deal to fly all the way there pay for an airbnb and then go back and forth during the wedding it just doesn't seem worth it it's a lot of effort to do all of that by myself with a small baby the airbnb and plane are still refundable at this point my cousin is mad that I'm canceling as they paid per head and can't reduce the amount at this point. I said they can try to find someone else to invite. I said it's his fault that they didn't write the child rule on the invitation. He said I should not be stingy and get a babysitter. I don't know anyone in that area of California and honestly paying for a babysitter on top of an Airbnb and flight is ridiculous to me. He says it's, it's standard not to bring children to weddings. So am I the asshole for canceling close to the date because I can't bring my baby with me? Uh, edits for clarity. Short notice is because bride is pregnant. I live with my husband in Germany where he is posted. Baby already has a passport because she is uh, only uh, is only U.S. citizen. Because of the shotgun nature of the wedding, the invite consisted of a graphic image without particular guest names emailed to the guest. The RSVP system also let me choose up to three people, so I thought that was me, my baby, and my husband. Update. Apparently about 30 people have canceled because of this, and that's why they are complaining so much about the cost. LOL, 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 <laughs> Wow. Uh, no, I do no. not believe you are the asshole uh, at all because that's just, she's no. right. It, to, to, to go back and forth from what the wedding to the Airbnb for the baby, like, you want me to do what? Yeah. And you want me to fly from Germany? 
which is a very long flight. And see, personally, I've never heard of a wedding that it was no kids. I've never been to one that was oh, no kids. I have. I've heard of it, but it's usually no no kids. Not no kids under 12. It's just no kids. Like, mm-hmm. it's either no kids or kids. Like, yep. the under 12 thing doesn't really make any sense. You know what I mean? Because it's all of the kids under 12 are the ones who would need to come and who can't honestly, stay at home because they would need a babysitter. I think like, the, 12 and up, you can stay by uh, yourself pretty much. I think the cousin's kind of an asshole because... Oh! The, 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 the audacity. Enti- the entitlement of, yeah. this is my wedding, you need to be there, and you need to go back and forth to the hotel. That that threw, <laughs> threw me off. Like, bitch, yeah, you can't well, I guess what I thought... Now, see, I thought that part, like, maybe the, like, the cousin was trying to make a suggestion, which... It wouldn't be a terrible suggestion to me, technically, like if you were more local, right? Like, but if I'm flying like all the way there, and then like, wh- then who gets to choose at what point the, that who gets to miss the ceremony and then go to the reception and then drive back? A, like, you know what I mean? Like, then then who gets to go where? It would cause so much complexity, like that. Um, yeah, she's right. It's not worth it. But if you're right, I mean, from, it, if you're flying from Germany. Don't you want to be at the whole wedding, though? I mean, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Well, and like, and every what you you'd have to like the baby is gonna feed roughly like every two hours at that point, two to three hours. So like, I mean, you would definitely like, you know, depending on like if you could feed your baby, what sleep schedule they're on, like, and then who's gonna stay with the baby? You're gonna hire a random ass babysitter in California to watch your four month old? No, nope. no, sir. <laughs> no, sir. We're not doing that. No. Nope. In what world does that make sense? It doesn't. Yeah, it does not. <laughs> People are tripping. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, you know, it, but it just goes to prove <laughs> the point that if 30 people had, like, canceled because of that, obviously, you know, especially when you, you're giving people three weeks notice. Like, right. To me, at that point in time, since you didn't put it on the original invitation, then that's your loss. Now kids are allowed. Like, yeah, especially and if you, you have all these people. Like, if it's, it's a bunch of family, then. why wouldn't you call them? And be like, hey, we had to do this like mass invite type thing, but we, you know, here are the stipulations, kind of thing. Let people know ahead of time. Like, because if you're gonna do that, then you you have to take the time, and that might be well, the a pain in gonna... the ass to call everybody. But if you really want people to be there, you need to, and you might as well have just why. Well, the why would you make that rule? Yeah, Under and the, 12. the cousin's going to find out really quick because they're shotgun wedding. So they're going to find out real quick just how not easy that yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, because, uh-uh. you know, and I've heard, going back to Mel, talking about she's never really heard of it much. So, like, my husband's nephew, their wedding was no children allowed. And so um, due to that, no children allowed, um, my daughter could not attend their wedding. And she was probably 50. 14 at the time so i'm like 14 is not a young child but they, it was literally no children so, so did um, they not have like a, a flower girl or a ring barrel uh, bear, uh-uh. bear, whatever they're called no. nope so okay. um we we decided so my son and his girlfriend went into the wedding but my husband and i decided not to attend the wedding um he ended up having to work and then i was like you know what i'm not gonna go to this wedding and i wasn't trying to be rude right but it was like Mike had to work and then it would have left Riley to be like Michael and and Mia went. So then it would have left Riley like, okay, well, you're not welcome. You know what I mean? And and I didn't want her to feel that way. So I decided to just stay home with her and then not make it a big deal about where, you know, Michael and Mia were going and it was, you know, their cousin's, you know, wedding. And so uh, I just try not to make it a big deal. But I think there's also, I think there was a reason for it. Um, I think it was because theirs was also at some type of like awesome. type of vineyard type of like um, setting. Yeah. And I think that it, I think it was the actual facility. Like it was a rule there, like okay. no children. Yeah. So I don't like so that's why they couldn't say, well, Riley's old enough. Like it should be fine. I think it was yeah. just because of where they were actually having the wedding. I don't think it and was that, like a, that might have been the case for this guy, or, you know, because well, is it a vineyard? So, the, I mean, if they're serving wine and stuff, they might but have an the, age limit on just. It's the 12 mm-hmm. and under thing for me, though. Yeah, because it was yeah. 12 and under. 
Yeah. Well, it's just, it's weird that they would say, like, because I can understand not having any kids or nobody under the age of 18 because of alcohol, right? Right. So, but, like, under 12, that just, to me, that part is, like... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe their flower girl was 12. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Shit. I don't know. So, I'm gonna, yeah, definitely not the asshole, though, because, no. like... It, sh it also shouldn't be that big of a deal that it should be understandable. Like, hey, we invited you. Okay, you can come. <laughs> I understand, you know. All right, we'll let's post pictures. Move so. on to another right. one. Okay. All right. Uh, am I the asshole for laughing in my cousin's face when she tried to stage an intervention for my drug use? Yeah, I've seen the title uh -oh. of this one. I was like, okay, this one. Okay, this is going to be interesting because not the asshole. I have... I can only imagine what yeah. this is going to be about. Okay, so uh, he's 27. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I have a condition which causes me to overproduce earwax. Okay. Ew. Okay. <laughs> that's different. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's a tough one, man. Sorry. Uh, I don't tell people about it because I was bullied for it growing up. I can only imagine. Only my wife and parents know. Every other day I have to put medication in each ear, let it sit, then flush it out with a rubber tip syringe. This prevents ear infections, vertigo, permanent hearing loss, and worsening of my uh, tight tightness. Tinnitus. 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 Ooh, that's a fun word. I have dealt with all of these things to some extent, so I stay on top of my eardrop regimen. If my alarm goes off when I'm with others, I go to the bathroom for 20 minutes and knock it out. If I don't, if I don't follow my schedule, I forget so I can, so I can't put it off. I already know where this is going. <laughs> Two weeks ago, my mom hosted family dinner. My cousin Kara, uh, who's 37, saw me waltz up to the bathroom, do my thing, syringe in hand, and asked what I was doing. I said just a minor medical thing. She kept pushing but i didn't want to say anything because she gossips i told her it's personal and scooted past when i left she was standing in the hallway she asked what took so long and why the toilet didn't flush i said none of her business she said she didn't mean to offend last weekend my friend called me to invite me out to lunch with some buddies he said to meet up at his house so we wouldn't have to drive separately i arrive at his house to find kara and my friend sitting solemnly on the couch Kara said they were here to talk about my problem and that they just wanted to help. I said there is no problem. Suddenly it clicked in my head what this was about. I couldn't help but laugh a little bit out of shock. She asked what was so funny and I said, first of all, why didn't you talk to my wife or my parents? She said she didn't want to involve my enablers, which just made me laugh harder. <laughs> she looked annoyed and said she was done trying to help and I said, that's all right by me. She stormed out. I explained to my friends they knew I have a condition, uh, but never pressed me on it. I guess when Kara approached them, they thought I was lying. Obviously, I'd rather they know than worry about me being an addict when I'm not. I thank them for their support anyways. Kara had apparently reached out to all my friends by uh, oh through uh, my social media. We got all... We all got a good hearty laugh out of it, which Kara must have heard because she was, of course, eavesdropping. She burst back in and told me to tell them the truth, to which I said I did. My friend kicked her out. We went for lunch, and I thought that was that. My mom called me yesterday, and she told me that she had talked to Kara about the whole thing and explained... She said Kara was very upset with me and essentially called me an asshole for not explaining and laughing in her face and embarrassing her. I said I was embarrassed and that Kara had no right into, or, into my info. I think she shouldn't go around snooping and making assumptions. My mom still thinks I should apologize. ETA. Uh, she didn't see my alarm go off, just ran into me on her way from the kitchen. My alarm isn't for dinner time. It's for 9.15 p.m. I do it at home most of the time edit broke up the wall of text sorry about that okay no he's not the asshole no <laughs> i would have no, no, no. laughed too i'm sorry I well it's like i mean like why like being so nosy like maybe he so... maybe he's constipated maybe that's why he was in there for so long but he didn't flush so well but okay. he couldn't go he was constipated nah, that's true so, That's some frustrating shit right there, no pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I th I do think he is kind of an asshole. So, and here's why I think that. 
So by reading it, and he, and, and the way it's written, he was very, very open about how it, how it went down. Mm -hmm. So when I look at it, interpret it, right? And you're stating that this is things that like, you know, that you don't really tell anybody. So here you have a concerned cousin, right? This is your family member that just sees you like randomly go into the bathroom with this syringe in your hand, right? That's all she sees. And then you're gone for a while, no toilet flushing. And if she sees this on mul like multiple times or whatever it might be. It was just the one that, night. Okay. But even then that could be very, dinner time. it would be very concerning to me, I think that I, like, I don't know that I would have went intervention wise, right? Like, I don't know that I would have went that far. Yeah. Like that, 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 that well, part I think, is a but bit that's much. Like, so imagine it this, he already doesn't want people to know. His friends know right. he has a medical condition, but they don't know what it is. But she went behind his back after he said to leave it alone, it was his business, and discussed with him, assuming he is, that he, now she spread a lie that he's a drug addict. So now they think he's lying to him and there he's on drugs. And he walks in and now he's embarrassed. And he also, and now he's forced to tell everybody he, she's the asshole. He also Fuck said, her. but he also oh, I got a cousin. That's he al that. he also mm -hmm. said that this cousin likes to go around gossiping. So I can understand why he didn't want her. To yeah, know. yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, I well, no, that and that's the part that got me. I got a cousin that's like that. Yeah, I think that's too. why I said. I think that's why I said. I I thought maybe he was a little bit of the asshole. Like I think that like, um. I think the cousin also needs to apologize for her presumptions, right? Like, I think that, like, I don't think that mom should just expect him to apologize. I think that, <coughs> like, if she felt some type of way, right? So, like, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't know. I kind of have a story on this, that. Well, this not, one's a little bit, little, not, this one's a little bit more tricky for me. Not the, not the, it's not about drugs or anything, but you said something, uh, Carol, that kind of made me think about a situation between me and one of my cousins. And I know she she's started watching our podcast, so she might even see this, but I, I really don't care. <laughs> um, she said, I won't, I won't say her name, but like she said, uh, me and her got kind of got into a, a little argument on social media. And my mom, and it's more about my brother than my, than my cousin though, but my mom came and she's like, y'all should be ashamed of yourself going at this on social media like this y'all acting like children da, 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 da. i mean my mom probably wasn't wrong uh but the thing that i do disagree with my mom on is how she came to me and she's like well your brother she he's always had your back he's always having your back and uh and i don't know it was just it's crazy and i'm sitting there going my brother was in on it too calling her names <laughs> oh mm. so like and it wasn't like we were ganging up on her she just got mad because uh, I posted something about having deer meat for dinner, and she thought that was cruel to animals, so. What? Yeah. Maybe it's a Texas thing. Now, she's from Ohio. I'm from Texas, so. Ha! <laughs> Carol! <laughs> Carol, how do you feel about deer meat? Do y'all ever have- yeah. Do you have deer meat there? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, do people hunt? Do people hunt? Or do they, oh, do, yeah. Do they know how to cook oh, it, okay. right? <laughs> I don't know. They do. So the only thing I like is uh, deer. I like deer jerky, oh, I like and um, I, like deer jerky I also, deer I also, is really good. yeah, I was getting I say, and I don't mind like a deer summer sausage, yeah, um, but like the re like to, like cook like venison, like to like cook a steak or to cook ground oh, deer no. or she was, eh. is, uh, she was well, mad because she was mad because my my dad and my brother went out and hunting and killed the deer. You know, she was mad about that and. I was making, I think I was actually making deer jerky out of it, but, and I posted it on social media, but you know what? There's a, she didn't have to respond. She didn't have to give me her opinion. Yeah. No, I well, still stand by yeah, that. I mean, it's, it was, <laughs> I'm, I'm a firm believer in like the circle of life, right? Like there's yep. a reason why, like, uh, you know, I think one thing, uh, I really admire about like the native Americans, like coming up is when they used to, like before we had technology and all of that kind of stuff, like you would really have to hunt and gather to survive. And they used every piece of, uh, everything that they collected. Like if they got a deer, they used the skin, the hot, like the hide of it, you know, the meat, the organs, like everything, the bones to make stuff, not one thing went unused. Yep. And that animal and it, it like gave back and it's literally you know the circle of life and then when we die we're it, you know we go into the earth and become one with the earth and refeed everything else around us and uh so i understand like cruelty to animals is a no-go for right. me like I mean, people who are no, like tortured dogs no and stuff like that we enjoyed every bite of it 
<laughs> yeah, no, well, and, like, if you hunt, you hunt, you know, you just, you kill them quickly. It's not, like, a, it's not for sport. It's, I, I believe in hunting for necessity. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't like hunting for sport. Like, I, my cousin is a big game hunter, and I'm not really down with some of that. Like, if you, it's, if it's not necessary to kill, I don't think you should. You know, but I'm uh, a firm believer in eating a nice filet mignon. Mm -hmm. And I like hamburgers. But anyways, that was off topic. And pepperoni it was on my pizza. <laughs> the, the cousin thing just yeah. kind of reminded me of that situation a little bit. Mm. Yeah, so I would say I was definitely not the asshole. I think, that, I mean, it probably could have gone about it like a little bit differently. I mean, is there really a way to win in that conversation, though? Because even if he, when she stops him on the way to the bathroom, like, where are you going, bitch? Uh, and he's like, none of your business. And she's like, why won't you tell me? Why did you take so long? Why didn't the flash? And he's like, I don't want to tell you because you tell everyone else yeah. all my business. Exactly. That's like, what I would have said. It's, it's a medical thing. It's none of your business. I don't want you to tell my secrets to everybody. Now she's going to be mad about that, right? Like, that's yeah, what happens no when winning. you... Yeah, I don't think you can win in that situation necessarily without just outright telling her what it is you don't want to tell her. And then at that point, like... Yeah. I don't know. So I don't think he's the asshole. I think she... She should have just, like, called him or approached him about it privately if she really or did care. Learn not to I think gossip. She, I think she's kind of... She sounds like the type of person that likes to be, like, the center of attention and kind of causes a lot of drama, like, right. often. Because I feel like that is, like... After seeing him one time and not speaking to him about it privately outside of that circle first and going straight to having a fucking intervention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, 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 that's weird. Dick, that's a dick move. I'm sorry, but that's, like, a, that's the I part think that's, that's weird. That's what makes him not the asshole is the right, fact that right. she escalated it to that point, like without uh, addressing him first. And he even said, like, why didn't you talk to my sister or my mom first? Well, I didn't want to talk to your enablers. Well, like, so you just went straight to his friends. And you just not assumed kept the it within worst. your family. I you mean, just told his friends. Yeah. And like, you assumed that he was in a, they were enablers. Right? And you, and you assume encounter, that he's a drug addict. Like, right? If this was the first encounter, then, then like, my first thought, if, if somebody had a drug issue that I thought was going on, I probably would talk to the spouse. Like, to, like that. I think yeah. that's where I would go first. Not necessarily parents, but I definitely would have talked to the spouse. Right. So. Like, damn. Okay. Yeah. All right. Moving so, on. <laughs> hey. That was good though. Those stories are good. I like yes. I like doing this. this if y'all would like to yeah, do some fun. more of these, let us know because this was fun. <laughs> yeah, it definitely was interesting. And then yeah. brings out our own stories for like you yeah. know, well, am I the asshole? <laughs> for sure, for sure. Uh, well, y'all yeah, never I, told. We already me know Lacey's the asshole. But y'all never told me if I was the <laughs> asshole in my story. Was I the asshole in my story? <laughs> no, well, without, I mean, without knowing more about it, <laughs> I'm like, I guess. um, well, well no, uh, probably. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know. We, I think we, we all have a little bit of asshole in us. I do for sure. Yeah, I, can, I do for sure. I'm more of a sarcastic asshole. Yeah. I like pe yeah. other people's drama. I don't. I don't want drama on my own. I right. Like Some people just say that I'm cold. Like I'm cold-hearted about stuff. That's what people tell me. I that's think that I seem like I don't, I don't. My husband says I'm cold on it. That's what they say about people who have boundaries. Yeah. You know? Anyways. Yep. Yep. All right, guys. Well, well this was I think fun. that's it. It was fun. Make sure yes. you guys like, comment, subscribe. If you want to support the channel, those links are there as well for you guys. And, uh, We'll see you next time. Uh, and uh, check oh. out our merch shop. We also have an oh, Etsy, yeah. an Etsy oh, store yeah. now. Woo, woo. <laughs> woo. So, yeah. yeah, check us out. Appreciate yeah. it. Peace out. Peace.